Hello everyone, this week on the Real Estate Investors Resource, how to buy a vacation rental, finding and betting the deal. Hit the music. Hey everyone, I'm Paul Aker, real estate investor, realtor, and real estate author. And this week we're gonna talk about short-term rentals and depending on where you're at, vacation rentals. Now, this is a quick way to big profits for some people, at least that's what it can be if you do it right. The only question is, how do you find the right deal and how do you know when you've found it? Well, those are some of the things that we're gonna talk about in this video. And I'm here to tell you that these are some great guidelines. I'm not gonna feed you full of horse fertilizer and tell you that this is the be all end all video that as soon as you watch this, boom, you're ready to go master the vacation rental universe. But I can tell you, if you watch this video, it will point you in the right direction and hopefully give you a big head start on how to do it and how to do it right. So the first thing that I want you to think about as we go through the tips in this video is how to adjust your mindset, okay? And that is to divorce emotion. That's right, take emotion out of this thing. This is not like buying a house. This is something entirely different when it comes to a vacation rental or a short-term rental investment. What you need to do is look at those buildings or those houses that you're looking at and see them as a big box of numbers and really nothing more. If that box of numbers works out and it makes sense for you financially, you buy. If it doesn't, you walk right on down the street because that's the way you're gonna be a successful investor. You've gotta remove the emotion out of this equation. It's not like that personal residence of yours where you say, wow, I really love the kitchen, so maybe it's worth a few bucks more. No, you're gonna have an equation in your mind and you need to know if the numbers are inside or outside that parameter. If they are, you buy. If not, you don't. It's really that simple, folks. So now you need a property profile. That is, what is this property going to look like? Is it going to be a property that you are going to manage? Or is it going to, uh, meaning self-manage? Or is it going to be a property that has on-site management? Is it going to be a property that has off-site management? All those things will have different costs. And then you need to take a look at uh, things like geographically is this in the right area is uh, the property that you need something that's going to be on the beach or maybe across the street from the beach or maybe a, uh, an altogether different neighborhood one that's up and coming or close to attractions whatever the case is you need to develop this profile and take a look at uh, the properties that you think will fit that profile once you have that profile in mind, now you can narrow down that search and really start looking. All right, so now you have that pool of properties. You are looking, looking, looking. It might take some time, but you've got that pool of properties. You're learning all you can about those properties before the right one even comes along, meaning you know whether they're managed, self-managed, have off-site managers, whether they're close to the beach. So my point is, is that you have that target list that you're narrowing down. And once you get it, that right one comes along, now it's time to demand the books. You're ready to make an offer, or maybe you had made an offer, and now the first thing you wanna do, or one of the first things you wanna do, is make sure that this property is going to match up with your ROI expectations. Demand the books. Now, ideally you will do this before you make an offer. Uh, say, uh, right before you make an offer, after a viewing, or something like that, after a showing, you ask your realtor to go and get the books. If this is a business, if this is a property that's operated as a business, they should have what's called a profit and loss statement. And that should be handy. You need that to know how viable this property is. And here's what you're gonna look at. Uh, it's called profit and loss, but what you really wanna take a look at are several factors. One I mentioned already, the occupancy rate. What was that place averaging for occupancy rate? You know, around this area of Maui, you want something at least in the lower 70s. Other parts of the country can be a lot lower than that, but we have high property costs here, so you gotta keep that place occupied. Nightly rental rates. You wanna see, how's this thing performing? What's the, uh, what has the nightly rental rate been on average in the past there? And of course, what are the management costs and fees, uh, taxes, things like that? You need a good idea of exactly how this thing is doing, how viable it is financially, whether that ROI is in parameter or out of parameter, so to speak, whether it makes sense for you or it doesn't. That's the essentially the easy part. That's just the math there, right? Where it gets a little trickier is uh, where things are falling into a bit of a gray area. Maybe it's performing 
just below what you want for an ROI. Maybe it's performing right at or under what you think your, your return should be for the year. But you say, you know, if I spend a couple thousand bucks to paint the interior, maybe another five to seven grand to update the furnishings in that one bedroom apartment close to the beach or close to the, the ski lodge, I think this thing is gonna generate another 10 to 15%. And I caution you, you should have an informed basis for thinking this, but uh, it's not that hard. Take a look at what other properties are doing that match those elements and then base your decision on that. But if you find that and you think, well, you know, if I spend that, say it's another eight, nine grand uh, on the property after I acquire it, or perhaps you can negotiate it down, but you don't, in this market, it's tough. But at any rate, if you can invest that money to make the property the way you think it will, uh, it will need to be, then you might get twice that money out of it in a year. So really, you really have to pay close attention to where the opportunities lie. This is really not the time to say, you know, if we knock out that wall, we expand this, that's a different evaluation, a, a totally different analysis that you're gonna need to spend a lot more time and consideration on. But uh, fresh paint, you know, uh, upgrading the furniture, maybe changing some of the appliances, things like that, that's fairly easy stuff and you can quantify exactly you know what your return is going to be based on what the other properties are doing always look to uh, places like air dna if you need help determining what the property rates should be uh, what other vacation rentals in your area are doing or short-term rentals in your area are doing those will all help you out so you know just a reminder here you know it's possible that you'll you'll make an offer and get into the deal and then get the books and if you find something in the books there that just do not match up with, with what your expectations were, whether that was represented by somebody, you were led to believe that, or just assumed it. It is typically, generally, consult your realtor and if necessary, your attorney, but generally, you're going to have time in the deal as long as you do that quick uh, to backpedal. Now, I'm gonna caution you severely about backpedaling in a deal because first of all, it does not pay you to tie up your money, your earnest money, uh, and uh, your time into a property that you're not going to consummate the deal with. That's just bad business. But number two, and uh, maybe as importantly in terms of dollars and cents, it can cost you a lot of credibility, not only with your realtor, but uh, in the community as well. And I know it's sort of a squishy thing, hard to quantify, but you do not want the reputation as the buyer that goes around making offers only to yank those offers back and uh, backpedal out of deals. That will sink you potentially in future deals. If it's real, a real concern, and you know the, the, uh, the issue is a significant one, great, you know, you get out, fine, no worries. Uh, if not, if it's somewhere in between there, you negotiate, right? You say, well, you know, I, th I really did think it was gonna be turning a 15% ROI, and you're, you're not even doing 9%. Uh, you know, maybe you have room to negotiate based on that. Maybe you don't, uh, that's fine. Just remember in this market right now, uh, this is as you, if you're a real estate investor, done any investing at all, you know things are happening like that, that fast. So you know that you need to make deals and make decisions quickly or lose those opportunities. So just keep that in mind, both as you make the deal, consider the deal, and of course, if you're thinking about backing out what it could cost you down the road. Now, I wanna tell you, as I mentioned, this is a good, large overview of uh, how to spot a vacation rental, the things, the steps that you need to do on a vacation or a short-term rental. This is not the drill down specifics. This is not a book. The book is on Amazon. It's called Profits in Paradise. It's excellent. I wrote it, Profits in Paradise, how expert secrets for finding, uh, negotiating and winning with Airbnb and vacation rentals. You can find it right there, easy to get to. It's got all this information plus a ton more of useful information that really does come from an expert that really is based on real world knowledge and is not a blogger or somebody overseas uh, that's paid 500 bucks to write a book. This is the real deal, folks. Go out to Amazon, check it out, and it will serve you well. If not, you drop me a line and I'll make it up to you. And by the way, don't forget the Facebook page. We have the Real Estate Investors Resource Facebook page linked below. That's going to give you a great way to chime in, get information, participate in what is a lot of fun with a whole bunch of other people talking about short-term rentals, vacation rentals, Airbnb, uh, vacation rental strategies, just general real estate investing strategies, all right there at the Facebook page. So go ahead and join the group. The link is in the descriptions. And of course, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff because you know what? 
you will get notifications when these powerful, informative videos come up. Plus, you'll be giving back. So help a brother. Hit the music. Aloha, guys. We'll see you next time.